Hey, what's up? This is my second packet tracer tutorial video. In the first video, we set up this very basic network using static routes between all the routers. In this video, we're going to introduce VLANs on this switch. So, we're going to put this host in a different VLAN. We're going to put him in VLAN 20. We're going to keep this guy in the standard VLAN 1. And to do this, we're going to have to also set up sub-interfaces on this router. After that, we're also going to have to reconfigure our uh, static routes. Not all of them. We're just going to have to add a route on these two routers to reach the network that we're going to configure for this host. So when you set up a VLAN, you're basically segmenting a switch into more than one, uh, more than one virtual switch. So it's a lot like having two physical switches here. So physically or logically, I guess, whatever the layout would actually be like this from this host. You would have this switch for this host and another virtual switch for this host going to this router. So we're going to have to come up with another network for this VLAN. So we're going to call this network the 4.4.4.0 network. And I'll go ahead and type that one in. 4.4.4.0 and we're going to assign the host 4.4.4.1. Now we're going to start here with the host. Go into his IP address. This is all null and void at this point. 4.4.4.1 is going to be his IP. We're going to use the same subnet mask, but his default gateway is now going to change to 4.4.4. Oh, messed up. 254. So this will be the address of the sub interface that we're going to configure off of router 0. Now we're going to move on to the switch here. Enable configure terminal and and we see that uh, Timmy is on interface fast ethernet 0. Dot, or 0 02. And we're going to enable the VLAN on this interface using the command switch port access VLAN what VLAN did I say was going to be in? 20? okay when we get a message that says that the VLAN doesn't exist so it created it for us now a best practice to do here is to change the mode to access mode and do a switch port no negotiate so that it can't turn into a trunk by negotiation later I'm going to write that now to confirm that we have uh, VLAN 20 on the switch, we're just going to do do show VLAN brief, and there we see that VLAN 20 is entered on the switch, and that fast Ethernet 02 is in that VLAN. Now, since we have multiple VLANs configured on this switch now, we're going to have to turn fast Ethernet 024 into a trunking port. So we're going to go into that interface, I'm going to use the command switch port mode trunk and switch port trunk you don't have to do this command but I like to do it anyway allow VLAN all and we'll write that so for now the switch is done move on to router 0 here just do a show IP interface brief and see that we have 00 with the 1.1.1.254 IP already. Now to create the sub interface for the VLAN, we're going to go interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0 dot 20. It's good if you have a uh, sub interface number that matches the VLAN that's going to be servicing just so that you can look at it later and instantly know uh, what that sub interface is for. So we're going to configure it with an IP address of 4.4.4.254 with the slash 24 subnet mask. Aha! So we can't just jump into the IP address. We're going to have to determine what encapsulation method this uh, port's going to use. So we just type in encapsulation dot 1q. Yep. And a tag of 20. So this tag at the end of that command has to match the VLAN it's going to be servicing because when a switch receives uh, data on an interface which is in a VLAN when it sends it out the trunking port which we have 024 configured as a trunk is going to send that frame tagged 
with a VLAN tag number, which is going to be 20. So if we get a VLAN 30 up in here and it sends a tagged frame out that trunk with a tag of 30, this interface is going to see it and it's going to be like, fuck, that, that ain't me. I'm 20. Get rid of that shit. Boom, I didn't finish that. So now we can assign the IP address of 4.4.4.254 and do do right so now let's just verify that we can ping that sub interface from this host ping 4.4.4.254 boom we're good now we shouldn't be able to get to the web server Now what's actually going to happen is this data is probably getting received by the web server, but it does not have a route back. So what's happening here is this is sending from the 4.4 network. It's hitting our sub interface and it's getting routed through the routing table over to here because this router actually has a route already set up like we did in the last video to this network. But this server is going to receive it, it's going to try to reply. This router does not have a route to the new 4.4.4 network. So we're going to have to put a static route to this new network on both of these routers. So we'll just go in here and do an IP route 4.4.4.0 slash 24 mask and we're going to do next hop IP 4.2.0.1 is going to be router zero's interface. That's all we need there. And the same thing over here. IP route 4.4.4.0. And we're going to use uh, the interface designator here, serial 030. Now let's see if we can do that same ping. Boom. Done. So in a nutshell, that's how you set up VLANs. What did we do? <laughs> okay, so we segmented this switch into two virtual switches, one for the 4.4.4 uh, network, 4.4.4.0 network, and the 1.1.1.0 network. Now a little bit, uh, a little bit more in-depth information here. This one, this host is still on uh, VLAN 1, so we didn't change anything with this interface or this interface. So this whole switch, as you know by default, would be in VLAN 1, no trunks. We turn 24 into a trunk. This is still on VLAN 1, which is also by default the native VLAN of this switch. So when this host sends data, it's going to go through the switch and it's going to go out the trunk untagged because that is, uh, VLAN 1 is the native VLAN of the switch, so its information does not get tagged, which is why it can hit the normal interface fast ethernet 00 on this router and still go through that IP that we configured before on the normal interface will serve as untagged traffic but whenever Tim wants to send anything his ports on VLAN 20 so it's gonna go through and because that 20 is not the native VLAN of the switch it's gonna go out tagged with the dot one Q number of 20 and it's going to hit this interface, it's going to see that the sub interface matches that tag and so the sub interface will serve as that request. So that is basic VLANs in a nutshell, hope that helped a little bit. Next video hopefully we're going to change over this to uh, OSPF or something, not sure what protocol I want to use there. But yep, thanks for watching.